license plate. It's something that we all have if we have a car, but there hasn't been a lot of uh, innovation. But it looks like what you're doing here, Sean, is very innovative. Why don't you tell us about this electronic license plate? Yeah, so uh, we're with uh, Reviver Auto, and uh, we've come up with the world's first digital license plate registration renewal system. And it's um, something that goes on your car. You take away the old metal plate. How do you hook it up electronically? I mean, it needs a battery, or is it hook in to the electrical system? So the one we have here in front of us hooks directly into your electrical system, and we have installers, also pro shops, you can do through dealerships and have it installed. Connects directly to your battery. We also have a battery-only version in June coming out. It takes five minutes to install, lasts three to five years. So in the battery one, can an idiot like myself do it, or do I need to bring it to a professional? You can do it yourself. It's very simple. That's incredible. Uh, from a tamper standpoint, you were talking about some interesting features there. So, you know, some jerk just can't take away your license plate. Yeah, there's actually full anti-theft involved with it. So somebody tries tampering the plate, tries detaching it or removing it, it automatically sends you a text and an email. And if you didn't authorize that, or maybe your vehicle was stolen, you can automatically, through the app, report the vehicle stolen. And then, at that point, you can then transmit automatically, uh, the plate transmits the location device within 10 feet, and the police can come and uh, look at your vehicle. Well, it's got to have a very secure network because uh, the state, the state approved it, right? But they're, you're, you've got people's license plates on here. How does that whole process work? Well, first of all, you have to have, um, in California, you have to have the state of California have legislation approval. Then you also have to have the approval of the DMV and also um, with the uh, California Highway uh, CHP. How does the actual update work? Because you mentioned it, uh, the registration is all over the air. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's an IoT device. It's connected on LTE. Um, it also has some other connectivity with Bluetooth and also with RFID tags. But most of it's connected over LTE networks. So it's the same um, connection that you'd have with your regular cell phone. Um, it's also the same security that you have over a banking application for conducting banking, the same encryption and security you'd have to conduct. And so, for example, once you have the license set up, um, if you come up to your renewal, um, we send you a reminder. So no more DMV uh, waiting in lines. You get a reminder on your app, 60 days, 45 days, 15 days, tap on the link, automatically tap to pay, completed, it automatically updates your tags, you're done. And we'll remind you again the next year. Well, and there's some pretty cool messages in there, like I just saw one that said stolen. So how does that work? So as I mentioned earlier, if somebody's tampered with your vehicle or tampered with the plate, you as an individual can report it stolen, and only then you can transmit the coordinates, the GPS coordinates, to within 10 feet of where the plate or the car is. And so uh, a police officer or some other citizen might see, hey, that's the stolen car, right? You can also visually see it on the back of the vehicle if it was stolen as well, correct? Yeah, but again, uh, in your app, you actually can identify where the car is and then share that information, right, with the police? Correct. So we, ca we really carefully guard people's personal information and location, but if you choose to share that for the purposes of law enforcement or recovering your vehicle, as, as an anti-theft uh, um, element, we can do that and support that for you as well. And you handle all the graphics that are on there, right? Because the state just won't let you put any message up, right? No, it is. And so we have a lot of um, variability and options and customization, but every image is approved by the state. So when you use it, you have a carousel of options and, and ideas. In fact, on the bottom, there's over uh, 100 different, different sayings. You can say, you know, God bless America, have a nice day, uh, happy new year, um, I'd rather be running, um, you know, different things that you want to personalize. We also have, uh, in the next couple of months, coming up full emojis, custom logos that you can put on your favorite sports team, alumni. Um, we have a partnership with uh, the Komen Foundation for breast cancer, um, so you can have the ribbon on there and support uh, your favorite nonprofit as well. That's excellent. So how does the model work for this? I mean, if I'm a consumer with this, how much do I pay and is it a subscription fee? Yeah, so it's a, a cost to the plate. You purchase the plate and then there's an annual access fee as well. And you um, can also um, interact and then create uh, uh, additional new apps and different features as we move along and, and further customize it. In the future, uh, we are looking at how do we interact and we're doing some proof of concepts with smart cities as well. So we look at this as a control point for future smart cities on how any vehicle maker model can interact with city infrastructure for lights and, and traffic and safety, parking, tolling, things like that as well. Yeah, there's no camera on this one. Do you anticipate putting those kinds of smarts on it potentially? or? Uh, I think from cameras where there's so many integrated with vehicles now, 
Uh, we decided not to do that and just uh, maintain, keep the data connectivity. Uh, in the future, we'll also be able to integrate more with the onboard computer systems uh, in the car. And, and in the future, do things like integrate with Siri and Alexa, so you can uh, have voice interaction with the, with the plate as well. One of the intriguing things are the uh, Amber Alert messages and things like that that can be pushed to it. Yeah, so one of the things you can do is, if we're going to do geofencing, so if it's an area, um, if there was um, maybe a, a child abducted, we can uh, report that, and in a certain area, every vehicle that has a plate, we can show the, um, the alert message on the plate. Um, if there is uh, maybe, a, we just had, uh, I live in LA, we just had some mudslides. You can uh, create notices for, um, you know, flash floods, um, for emergency safety, um, you know, community uh, support as well. From a, um, you know, kind of forward looking, real forward looking, when you're looking at self-driving, driverless type cars, do you see this as being a potential, you know, kind of communications uh, platform as well to people that are out in the street? It is. In fact, some of the uh, ride share programs we work with are all electric vehicles now and, and future autonomous vehicles. Is One of the challenges they're seeing is they have a parking lot full of cars trying to identify the specific car. And so one of the things we're doing is being able to put your name so the car is reserved, the time, the location, how much battery charge is left in the vehicle, um, just to help ease more easily identify make it a better consumer experience to identify, locate your car, also provide key information and updates as well. And the state is okay with doing that kind of thing, huh? So right now we have approval on registration, renewal, and the basic licensing, and we're working with them on more advanced use cases. So every new thing we work with the state, make sure they have full approval, including the DMV and the CHP. Uh, it's the same thing also, we have full authorization in Arizona. And we have uh, about 10 other states we're working on over the next year as well. Wow, that's a huge uh, task just working with the state. So, Sean, I wish you well. Yeah, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Me.